Glory to Jesus Christ. And to the ages of ages. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and in the messengers that he sent forth to publish the gospel in every language and every nation on the face of the earth. Today, celebrating our holy and God-bearing fathers, Peter and Paul, the two chief of the apostles. Peter, who was the apostle to the Jews, and Paul, who was the apostle to us, those of us of the Gentiles. And when we look upon these two great leaders and great mouthpieces of God himself, we're amazed at the power that is to be found in weakness. For Peter, the chief of the apostles, how many times did his faith fail him when he began to sink beneath the sea and to deny Christ three times from fear? Brothers and sisters, Apostle Paul tells us why this has to be so. Lest people should think more highly of me than they ought to. Or lest we should think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. For as Paul says, I am not the master of your faith. So each one of us sees our Lord Jesus Christ as the master of his faith. For no matter how much we're taught and how much guidance we're given, there is no other master of our faith save our Lord Jesus Christ. Nor do we depend for our salvation on any but our Lord and God and Savior, who alone shed his blood for us. But see how many things these apostles suffered in order to proclaim that gospel and proclaim that word. For how many times was Peter taken in torment? But Apostle Paul above all, our beloved Father Paul, what things did he not suffer for the sake of the gospel? And not just for the sake of the gospel, but for our sake. For who but Apostle Paul was willing to truly follow Christ to the, on the cross while yet in this life? How many times was he betrayed by false brethren, beaten and cast out of the city as one dead cast into prison, beaten with rods, cast into the sea, taken as one dead, and walking along those roads in the heat of the day and in the cold of the night, in the frost of winter and the burning sun of summer. Always bearing in himself the thorn which God had given him to keep him from thinking more highly of himself than he ought. And in the end, poor Paul would boast mostly of the things of his weakness. Brothers and sisters, it is true that in our weaknesses, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God is seen more boldly, more brilliantly. Our Holy Father Paul, following in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ, his heart was enlarged to nations that did not exist and languages and tongues that were not yet spoken. And he embraced all of us, of all generations, in that mighty heart. As our Lord Jesus Christ had taken us all in his arms and embraced us upon the cross. And yet in all of these things, in all of the wonders, in all of the miracles, in all of the revelations of Christ Jesus and all the apostles, were any of them without weaknesses? Or did any of them go through their ministry without stumbling? Did any go without fear? And yet they faced the end of their lives, whether torture, whether crucifixion, whether beheading, with the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ radiating from their hearts and their lips. And we also, brothers and sisters, sometimes despair when we stumble and fall. Or when we have doubts, or when fear comes upon us. 
and yet the power of the grace of the Holy Spirit is able to lift us up again. And as Christ reached out and lifted up Peter, when he began to sink into the water, the grace of the Holy Spirit is sufficient for us to lift us up. Brothers and sisters, when we study and look at and see the lives of the holy apostles, and especially when we see our holy father Paul, who was our apostle, the apostle to the Gentiles, can we not stay, take strength from his weakness? Can we not draw hope from his fears. Brothers and sisters, as Paul commanded us, rejoice in the Lord and again I say rejoice. And let us do all things joyously as unto the Lord. And suffer and endure all things joyously as unto the Lord. We celebrate not just the memory of someone as if we were going to the cenotaph to commemorate veterans of a war. And yet we are commemorating veterans of a great war. As when we commemorate the holy martyrs, we are commemorating those who struggled and fought in the war of light against darkness. As followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, our great commander and high priest. We commemorate the apostles Peter and Paul <coughs> and all of them such an immeasurable debt for their courage in proclaiming the gospel. Let us, brothers and sisters, therefore take hope from their weakness and take hope in our own weakness. That in our weakness, our Lord Jesus Christ will make up the difference for us. That in our weakness, the grace of the Holy Spirit will embolden us and give us courage. That in our weakness, we might find the strength of divine grace and also be lifted up and lift one another's up, that we might learn somehow to proclaim the gospel in our life itself. Brothers and sisters, the grace of the Holy Spirit has united us today in taking up our cross, let us say, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. And today, Apostle Peter and Paul, who not only came in the name of the Lord, but placed his name and his glory across the face of the earth so that it has come down to us in this day, in this time, in this place. Let us rejoice, therefore, in our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ in gratitude for the voice which has brought his gospel to us. Amen.